Hi, Shalom Haverim. Are you upset that I'm talking to you? Are you sad that you're not a memory? I mean, after all, the Mayan calendar said that we're not supposed to be here today. Obviously, I am very happy that that foolishness is over with. And uh, I'm very glad to be alive and to be addressing you and to be serving God and to be a human being again. However, I often wonder why, do, why did so many people believe in this? Why were they anxious? Even if they didn't, weren't 100% sure, what was there in, in the prophecy that scared them so? Do people really want to hear bad news? Is, is that what we're actually yearning for? And when you finally hear that the world's going to end, yay, I was right the whole time? Well, if that's true, it's pretty sad. And my suggestion, starting with myself, is the antidote to all of this is joy and happiness, optimism, and create a good energy field all around you. Now, let me share with you a story from Rav Nachman of Breslev. I'll condense it. There was once a, uh, a poor Jew who always prayed to God for riches. And he wasn't going to abuse those riches. He had a large family. He was going to give charity. He was going to be a mensch. He would make God proud of him. And every day he had that sincere prayer, please Hashem, please Hashem, give me riches. One day it seemed to him that his prayers were answered. He was out in the field plowing and uh, suddenly the plow got stuck on some type of a rock and he began to dig around the rock and underneath the rock he saw something amazing there was a diamond or a pearl, probably a diamond. He knew enough to know that this was precious. He did not know enough of how precious it was. So he ends the work early that day and he takes his coach and wagon. He goes to the next larger town or city and he goes to a jeweler who appraises it and says, this is absolutely magnificent. However, uh, I can't use it because there's no way I could cut such a large uh, diamond into smaller and to have it set. But I hear that in London, there's like, you know, there's aristocracy and there are people that actually look for large jewels. If you will go to a jeweler in London, uh, you, you'll be very, very richly rewarded. Well, he was excited. God gave him riches. However, he had no cash in his pocket. So he went down to the to the port and uh, found out to, uh, a reputable captain and then asked to speak to him privately. He took out this diamond and he says, I'm a very wealthy man, I deal with diamonds and it just so happens to be I have no cash on me, but you see the diamond and I need passage to London around trip. And certainly once I'm in London and I sell my diamond, that I'll be able to uh, pay, pay passage captain saw the diamond he said oh that is absolutely wonderful uh you're gonna get the best cabin you'll you'll dine with me once a once a day and sure enough the the boat goes off and they're on the way to london and he's treated like royalty himself he kept on pinching himself is this really true me a simple jew god should make me wealthy and every day after the meal with the captain he would uh take out the jewel and stand near the porthole and watch how the sunlight would uh, make that diamond sparkle. Don't ask me why, but one time he did something which was rather foolish. He opened up the porthole because he wanted that the sun should actually uh, hit the, the jewel. And as he was holding it near the, that porthole, the, a, a wave hit the ship. He fell against the wall and that beautiful jewel fell into the water. And he was devastated. All of his riches, easy come, easy go, but he has a major problem. He can't go back to his farm. He's in the middle of nowhere. The captain, he's promised uh, passage to and, to and return. What, what's he gonna do in London? He has nothing, he has no contacts, no nothing. When the captain finds out that he was duped, he will certainly impress him into the service, or who knows what he might do. And he became very, very frightened. What should I do? He began to daven and daven, ask for another miracle, but this time there was no miracle happening. 
Soon there was a knock on the door. The captain was inviting him to dine with him. And he thought really quickly and he realized if the captain knows that he has zero, he's a goner. Instead, he'll make believe like everything is fine. So he puts on a happy face and he walks in and they make a small talk about this and about that as nary a care. Of course, he comes back. He's devastated. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? And one thing is very clear to him. Don't let anyone know because these people are unpredictable. For all you know, they'll sell you as a servant. Now they think you're an honored businessman. So two, three days pass until they see the shores of London. The captain asks for a private audience with him. And he says, you know, I've been observing you the last couple of days. You seem very deep in thought. I'm sure you're thinking about the jewel. But uh, I have a good feeling about people. And I know you strike me as an honest individual. I would like you to do a big favor for me. I have some contraband, um, some silk in the cargo. I cannot take it out and sell it. I'm the captain, you know, the public eye is upon me. But you're just one of the passengers. Perhaps you could do me the great favor of taking some of the things that I have and I will tell you who to go to and they will pay you. And they will pay you it's worth its weight literally in gold, this fabric. And uh, I'll give you a cut. Of course, um, he says, I know it's illegal, I know it's a little bit dangerous, but I'll give you more than a 10% cut. Of course, this, for this Jew, this was manna from heaven. And he makes a big show of thinking, should he, shouldn't he, until finally says, okay, I'll do it. And uh, he walks out with two suitcases filled with some very expensive items and he sells it and gets a very hefty uh, sum in return. The captain again wines and dines him and when he brings him back from his trip in London, he comes back, relatively speaking, a wealthy man. Said Rav Nachman of Breslov. The riches that he was supposed to get was what? Was it the jewel? Certainly it wasn't the jewel because he found the jewel and he lost the jewel. No, the riches that he received was because he was happy. <laughs> because he portrayed himself as a person filled with confidence and because he exuded a type of a positive energy, that's the blessing. That was the attraction that brought wealth to him. So my friends, it's a great story, something to think about. Want to be wealthy? Would you like blessing? All of us want both. Portray yourself as a person worthy of blessing. Because after all, God is good. Life is good. Torah and mitzvahs are good. And with this wonderful attitude, positive, you'll actually bring and attract to you manifold blessings. May we meet in happy times and in happy spirits. Thank you.